Beep, beep. What is up, guys? My name is Sam World. If you've ever wanted to make your leads, your chords, your bass line sound a little bit more warmer because you're trying to replicate that analog sound or you just want it to sound warmer in general, then this is the tutorial video for you because today we're going to be going over the perfect plugin that will give you just that. And that is going to be the Kramer Tape uh, by Waves. Now, a couple of years ago, I was watching an interview where Audium was being asked by Sonic Academy uh, production related questions. And one of those was how he gets his super sauce to just sound great. Um, um, he did talk about utilizing the Yuhi Satan, which is another tape machine, which costs more uh, to get them to sound warmer. And you're going to see why it works as when we put the Kramer tape on, you're going to notice that the brightness is reduced. Now, a couple of things you're going to be able to use this tape machine for, guys, is to reduce high end. Now, when people talk about analog sounding so warm, they're talking about the fact that there's not a lot of high end in analog, like in digital synths. Um, it sounds warmer and some analog synths actually produce noise, like the Korg MS-20 is notorious for just being super noisy. But but certain people like that and contribute that to sounding warm. So Kramer Tape is going to be a good plugin to do that. The other thing we're also going to be able to use Kramer Tape for is for adding a bit of distortion or saturation. If we push it to an extent, we can definitely get the sound to distort or saturate a bit more. And you might consider this more of an analog distortion or analog saturation, but that's another great way to use it. The third way we can use this, guys, is to use it as a delay. So in Kramer, we are going to have a delay we can use and we're going to have a slap delay and the traditional delay sad thing is we're not going to have a stereo delay but it's going to be more of a mono delay as we're going to show in this tutorial the next thing we can use the kramer tape for guys is we can put it on the master of a track and it's going to make it sound a lot warmer it's going to saturate it a little bit more and it also has this sort of compression feel to it and the final thing we can use the Kramer tape for, guys, is to add a bit of a wow and flutter effect, which is going to be a modulation effect you can put on vocals, leads, guitars, and pads. Now, with that being said, we're going to get straight into this tutorial, guys. And if you want to support my channel, make sure to head over to evilsounds.com. Most of the sounds you're going to hear in this tutorial are going to come from a brand new sound set coming out next week, which is in the style of Anjuna D, Progressive House. Very chill sounds in there, but I hope you guys enjoy them. And let's get straight into this video. And welcome inside of Ableton. Now, we're going to be using this preset called Little Voice by Lane 8, uh, inspired by the man himself. And this is how it sounds like without Kramer on it. So I put the cutoff all the way up on this guy. I actually kept it low just to kind of emulate that non-high ND, harsh digital saw sound. But if we put Kramer tape on, you're going to see what it does now. So you can see that some of the highs are sort of like magic. It kind of gets removed. Um, and that's just due to the fact that the Kramer is a tape machine. And like I stated, Audion uses this for his super saws. Um, he uses Yuhi Satan, but again, it, it's the exact same thing. Now we're going to be going inside of this so that you can learn how to manipulate it and how to move it around to get a desired result and how to set it up for certain scenarios that you might run into. A well-prepared producer is gonna make a banger for sure. Now, the first thing we're looking at, guys, is the speed at the top left of Kramer. Now, what this is gonna signify is the speed of the tape machine, duh. But what it's gonna do for the sound, which is the important part, is that at 15, you're gonna get more of a full frequency response. So that's why you heard a lot of highs right now. However, it's 7.5. You can see that the sound actually gets warmer and that's because at that speed you can't produce the higher frequencies the tape machine doesn't produce them so what does that mean well when you're putting kramer on a vocal on a lead and you want to maintain a little bit of high end it's more of a full frequency sound you want a full frequency response go with 15. when you're working with bassy elements that are very like dun, 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 uh, very low uh bass lines maybe bass heavy music and you're going to use this on the master uh, you might want to go with 7.5 but of course experiment between both i don't want to give you rules that you're going to end up breaking because then i'm just going to be a sad man you're not following my directions but that being said 15 is going to be my desired ips speed uh for this lead as i do want some of the highs i don't want them to get crippled too much now the next switch we have is going to be the bias now traditionally with analog synths if you bought one and you've been using it for years and years it's going to get uncalibrated it's going to get out of tune so you're going to have to take it to someone that's going to open it up inject some uh, sweet love into it and then it's going to get calibrated again and it's going to be in tune same thing with the kramer tape or tape machines in general however what producers and mixing engineers found is that when they uncalibrated and they actually pushed the, the tape uh, 3db over the recommended setting that the manufacturer would say it would give uh, a different vibe which they liked so you can definitely switch between the normal 
and the over. Uh, so it's up to you to kind of pick it up with your ears, but if you notice, uh, over is just going to give you a little bit more of a more kind of like it got pushed a little harder uh, type of vibe. Below that, we're going to have our monitor, which is just going to monitor the signal coming in and the signal coming out uh, after everything we've done. Now, keep in mind, this is not an A and B, like turning off the Kramer tape, because you're still going to have Kramer tape influencing the sound due to the record and the playback level. Notice that when we have this on, it kind of does add a bit of a push and a bit more of a compressed vibe to the sound. So keep that in mind. That's not what that is for, but it's just meant to, again, kind of look at what you're starting with and then going into these parameters that you're switching, what the outcome is going to be. Okay, below that, we have a record and playback level. Instantly, you should think input level and output level. So this is going to be the input level. So let's assume that the, the synth itself is very quiet and you just want to bring it up more then you would increase the record level. And then you can instantly put up the playback level as well. Okay, uh, pretty straightforward there. Uh, another thing that might happen is if you have this loud and you push the record level, you might find that it starts to run hot. And what I mean by that is, is like any other thing, when you clip the channel, when you clip a saturator, when you push it too hard, you start to get artifacts, you start to get saturation and distortion. However, keep in mind that the record level doesn't really affect the saturation that much. It is going to be present, but the flux is actually going to have to deal with, again, running it hot, giving it that analog saturation and giving it that distortion as well. However, if you do push the record level up, you're going to notice that you get a little bit of saturation happening. You're getting a little bit more of those mid lows and mids in there. So this is where the magic's going to happen in the tape, guys. It's not going to happen anywhere else but here. You got to make sure that you're not running stuff in hot and you got to make sure that you're not running stuff in cold. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. So you want the perfect volume. So do utilize the VU meter up here. Traditionally, you want something between negative seven to zero. That is going to be the sweet spot of this plugin. Uh, so make sure that you have that uh, uh, using that to your capability there. So Right now we're along the sweet spot. Okay. From that, we are going to have a way to link. So if you increase the record level, the playback level comes down. Now that doesn't mean that, you know, you're going to get rid of the saturation or distortion or the artifacts that occur by pushing that level up. Uh, but it just lowers the output volume after everything has been altered. So keep that in mind. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense now of your output level and your input level. To the right of that, we're going to have the flux. Now, the flux is going to have to deal with the fact that when you record something, you're obviously recording it on one of these heads. So it's probably going to be the one on the left. Um, the higher this is, the, the greater the gain factor is. What that means is that you're just going to run it hotter. So that means more record levels actually going to go and be recorded into this. So this is where you're actually going to input distortion and saturation. So if we go from 150 all the way up, you're going to see what happens to the sound. Okay, so the flux is where you're going to actually, like, if you're running guitars or drums or bass lines through this, this is where you're going to add that nasty distortion, uh, as you're going to see in future examples we're going to be doing. But for now, this is going to be, again, a, a gain factor. So the best way to think about it is if I have it at 250, that means multiply this times two, and that's what's being recorded. And it gives you a hotter signal, which adds the crunch, the distortion, and the saturation. Now, one of the beautiful things about analog is that it's not perfect. And when you were running a tape machine back in the day, you would get a bit of wow and flutter, which would happen due to the mechanics. As this was moving, the mechanical parts would touch, and that would create friction, and that would cause wow and flutters, which is what... Pretty much manufacturers didn't want they wanted to prevent that however that has been associated with the tape machine sound and it's something that people categorize the tape machine with so if you want that imperfection which again imperfections means just more character then you can increase that when you push it hard you get the, you hear the, the the modulation Sort of like someone's routing an LFO to the pitch or the phase and moving it really fast. But if you don't use it at lower values, you also get more of a worn sound. And what that means is less highs. Okay, 
moving along we're going to go to the top right here and this is going to be our delay so as you guys know if you've used delay plugins out there sometimes you'll see the the nice term echo delay or sorry tape delay this is where you're going to be able to activate that if you want to use kramer for that so the key thing you have to keep in mind is that you do can switch between a slap and standard delay the slap is going to be a delay that's going to be closer to the sound Generally, it's used more on guitars, but you can definitely use it on leads as well. And I'm going to show you guys how that sounds like right now. So we're going to increase the low pass of this as this is going to have to deal with the delay itself. And this is just the low pass again, cutting the highs out. So we're going to leave it all the way open and we're going to apply again this slap. Here we're going to control the speed of the delay. Okay, here we're going to switch back to a normal delay. Now we can use the low pass to get rid of highs we don't want. Let's put some delay. If that doesn't sound analog, I don't know what will. So we're going to add a bit of wow as well. Again, analog is not meant to be perfect, and it's supposed to sound kind of grungy. It gives it a bit of character, and it's up to you to kind of decide how much of it do you want. But you do have that option available to you in the Creamer tape if you do want to add a bit of delay uh, to the sound itself, okay? Uh, from there, we're going to have a noise, and that's just going to introduce his now when you increase the playback level you're going to hear it more so it's there uh if you really need it one thing is that you, if you want this hiss to be dominantly there but you still want to balance the lead so it's not too loud what you can do is lower the record level down and then just bring up the playback level So keep that in mind that if you decide to go by using presets, which I don't recommend, um, because you can easily program this yourself, it does look a bit intimidating. But if you do this and you heard that noise and you're like, where is that coming from? It's coming from the tape, baby. So with that being said, guys, this is the first example of using the tape on a lead. Now let's use it on a bass line. All right, guys, so let's use Kramer tape on this bass line we have here. This is how it's going to sound like in its entirety. Uh, so we're going to be putting Kramer tape on our DX7 baseline here, which is going to sound like this soloed without the Kramer. Now, it's very important that I pay attention to the volume again, as I don't want uh, an increase in volume or a decrease in volume to be like, whoa, that sounds better, bro, uh, because that's not the purpose, again, of the tape. It's not a volume uh, reducer. It's meant to, again, saturate, make it sound a little bit more uh, warmer, analog, more character. So we're going to activate it right now with just uh, default settings and see how it sounds like. Now, what I want you to hear is the doon, 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 doon part of the sound. Uh, with it. So, I like the way it sounds like in those lower notes. It gives it a little bit of character. Now, let's set this up ourselves. Let's actually um, start to get it to where we want it to be. So the first thing you know, I'm running this hot. You can see our our, um, our meter is going all the way to plus three, plus two. Um, so we don't want it to do that. Again, the sweet spot is going to be around zero to negative seven. Uh, so we're going to get the link off, and then we're just going to pull the record down. And then we're going to increase the playback. Again, I want to keep an eye on my level 
So I don't want to increase it over what originally it's at. So we're going to set it to around a. Okay, once we have that, uh, let's start to mess with the speed. So if you remember, I said that lower speed will be better for baseline. So let's do that first. It sounds like when we have it on, it's controlling that do do part of the of the bass a lot better. So we're gonna set that there. Now we're gonna mess with the bias. Let's go between over and normal. Okay, from there, now we can start to mess with the flux and the wow. So we're gonna lower down the wow, just because I don't want it to introduce anything yet. And now we're gonna increase some flux and see if you know the distortion is gonna help or not. Okay, so around here, I'm, I'm liking it. I don't really want it too dirty, so I'm not going to push it up. But as you saw, that just gives more mid harmonics to appear. The bass gets a lot crunchier and dirtier. But this is not the right setting for that, so we're not going to mess with that. Now, the next is the wow and flutter. If you remember, I said that if you push it far, you get the a wow effect here and there. But we're not getting it here. So I'm going to use it maybe around 30 or 450. Okay, there we go. We're not going to mess with the delay, and if you want to add noise, go for it. But now let's hear how it sounds like in relation to everything else. more of a deeper response from the bass as you guys can see and i actually like the way it sounds so i'm gonna end up leaving it in the song i just want to see how it sounds like in the main meat of it now the next way we can use kramer is on the master and i'm actually using it in the song so here is our master okay uh, now, this master is going to be a preset, actually, that has been, I believe, modified or it's the same. But essentially, what we're doing is we're using a speed of 7.5 to dial a lot of the highs on this track. The reason for that is that it's a very chill song. I don't want it to have a lot of highs. I want it to be more warm. And what that means, again, is not a lot of high information. So Kramer's going to be perfect for that. If I wanted to go with more highs, I would go to 15, but I don't. So I'm going to set it to 7.5. From here, we are set to over, and I'm going to turn it off and on so you can see what it does to the overall song. And this is going to be a perfect tool. Again, if you're making stuff and you find that it sounds too harsh in the highs and you did everything you possibly could, try this out and see if it works. If I switch the speed of 15, it's going to allow more of the high. So as you can hear. 
here it kind of brings a lot of those hi-hats and those shakers up a little bit more in the mix it also controls the bass a little bit more uh but in that sense that's how we're using it here the flex is set to 250 again that's going to have to deal with uh the the load the, the gain factor for that recording head here um, the higher it goes, the crunchier this is going to be. Now, there are some presets that you can definitely mess around with. If we go with a crunch, you're going to notice the flux goes up. And that's just because, again, it's creating more of a nastier vibe. I never liked the way it sounded, though, so I don't really touch it. I go for more of a, a big or clean and open, and that works for me. Um, the noise here, you can lower that down if you don't like. Now let's put it in the break. Let's turn it off and on in the break and see what it actually does to our... It's just so much warmer and nicer. The last thing I'm going to use the camera tape for this example so they guys know how to use it is on a piano. So here we have a piano in this track without the camera tape. So let's apply it on. So instantly turn it off. It's going to get a little warmer. Now I'm going to set the speed to 7.5 because I want this piano to sound lo-fi. I want it to sound a little bit more like warmer. Now let's lower this down. And now we're going to decrease the record level and then bring it back up. Now from there we can mess with the flux. We can add a bit of wow and flutter. I actually did it in a track and people were asking. I like the movement the piano has, but it comes from this wow and flutter. So if we put it high. No, 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 no. So now let's play it on and off with the Kramer tape and see how it sounds like. So with it off, and again, it's going to be the same level, so don't let volume fool you. Now with it on. With it on. And with it on. So you can see uh, the settings we put, we put the flux really high up. So that actually saturated the piano a bit more and made it sound the perceived loudness of it a lot louder. Even though Ableton is telling us it's the same volume, uh, the reason we can hear the piano uh, with the camera on is just because there's a lot more harmonics present and that's just building the sound up and giving it a higher perceived loudness. Uh, it's up to you to decide which one you like or you can even lower down the flux so that's not the case. As you can see, but we still get a little bit of more higher perceived loudness with the Kramer tape and it sounds a little bit more stabler and a little bit less dynamics, of course, because saturation does have a compression effect. But again, it's up to you to decide whether this is something that you're going to need or not. If the contact, the grandeur uh, piano sounds fine that way, then there's no need to put it. But if you feel like it gives something to you and you like it, uh, go ahead and go for it. All right, guys, and I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. I hope that this shows you how to use 
uh, the Kramer tape. I remember when I first opened it up, I was a bit intimidated by it. It was crazy, but it's been a go to it and just getting something that sounds super digital and super harsh to sound a lot warmer and chiller. You can use it on the master, on vocals, on whatever, but now you guys know how to program it and what it can actually do. And hopefully that gives you a bit more confidence to actually use it in your tracks. And hopefully it becomes one of those aha moments for you where you're like, wow, this really changed my track from sounding digital to actually warm and feeling more, more alive and, and better. Uh, but with that being said, Ninjas, like always, um, everything you use uh, sometimes can cause harm and sometimes it can. It just depends if, it, if it's your style and it fits your production. Uh, but again, if you want to support my channel, evilsounds.com, and I'll catch you guys next time. You guys take care and peace out.